This episode was made possible by Skillshare. Get your first two months free by following the link below. Our modern world is full of specialized jobs. Professional water slide tester, chocolate engineer, corn detasseler? All unusual jobs, but then there are wine detectives. Elite wine experts whose job it is to determine the authenticity of expensive bottles of wine, and often track down the bad guys who made the counterfeit. It's a challenging job, as counterfeits are often hard to spot, especially without opening the bottle. But when choice wines can fetch tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, you can see why wine detectives are in high demand. Counterfeit fine wines have become a huge problem in the past few years, with one expert reporting to have documented over $5 million worth of fake wines in the past year alone. Like any professional, these wine detectives have their own specialized set of tools to help identify fakes. These tools include jewelers loops, razors, colored lights, magnifying glasses, flashlights, and innumerable other gadgets. But they also have a much more interesting trick up their sleeve. In high-tech laboratories around the world, physicists are able to test suspicious wine for trace amounts of cesium-137, the radioactive fingerprints of wine manufactured during the atomic age. As most people know, generally speaking, the older a vintage wine, the more valuable it can potentially be. One definitive way to determine whether a wine was actually made before the detonation of the first atomic bombs is to measure the amount of cesium-137 present in the product. If the wine was really made pre-1945, it shouldn't contain any radioactive content. Cesium is not a naturally occurring substance. It didn't exist on Earth until we started blowing up atomic bombs. Over time, this cesium permeated our atmosphere, working its way into the air, soil, and water. When it rained, the cesium contained in the water would seep into grapes and the soil at vineyards around the world and stay there. Okay, story time. It's not often you hear a story that involves Thomas Jefferson, atomic bombs, and over half a million dollars in wine fraud. Back in 1985, an intriguing bottle of wine came up for auction in London. The vintage was impressive enough, a 1787 Lafitte. But what was really interesting was a set of initials carved into the bottle, THJ. The auction house said that the evidence suggested the bottle had come from a collection of French wines which once belonged to Thomas Jefferson. The Forbes family bought the item for a cool $157,000, the highest price paid for any auction wine in history at that point. Once word got out that more Jefferson bottles were discovered, the ultra-wealthy began snapping them up as soon as they became available. Bill Koch, one part of the billionaire Koch brothers, purchased four bottles for $500,000. In 2005, the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston was preparing an exhibit on Koch's Jefferson wine collection and needed to verify their authenticity. The interesting thing about Jefferson is that he was an absurdly thorough record keeper and the leading wine connoisseur of the Republic. In over 60,000 documents, the vintage of these prized Jefferson bottles was never mentioned. Jefferson never ordered them. Koch had been duped and others with him. Each of the Bordeaux Coke had bought contained cesium-137, even though Jefferson died a hundred years before the first atomic blast. Bill Coke was more than a little upset at being swindled, so he brought out the big guns. Jim Elroy, a former FBI agent. Elroy assembled an elite team of wine experts, including a former Scotland Yard inspector from England and a former MI5 agent in Germany. The team did their job and caught the perpetrator, or rather, two different perpetrators. At least one of the Jefferson bottles contained no cesium, which means it was actually bottled before 1945. Unfortunately for the counterfeiter, the carved initials didn't look as authentic under closer inspection, and were traced back to a dental tool that certainly didn't exist in Jefferson's time. That end was tied up, but what about the bottles that did contain cesium? Coke decided to have his entire collection tested, and sure enough, out of his vast 50,000 bottle collection, over 200 were determined to be counterfeit. Each of them traced back to the same source, the notorious Rudy Carniawan. In a way, Carniawan is an artist. He didn't just throw junk wine into convincing bottles. He came up with his own impressively accurate recipes to fake historic wines, and these recipes often called for a mix of already expensive ones. He was also a shrewd opportunist. The collector or investment wine industry has exploded over the last several years, growing by at least triple in the last decade, and has become an over $300 million behemoth. Kurniawan figured that if he could make a convincing enough bottle, most investors would never open them. And even if they did, his mixtures were accurate enough to fool all but the most educated wine snob. Unfortunately for the self-made wine alchemist, he underestimated angry billionaires, and is currently serving a 10-year prison sentence for fraud. So the next time you're thinking about getting into the counterfeit wine game, pick a vintage after 1945, and use period-appropriate tools to engrave initials. And also, probably don't get into the counterfeit wine game. But if you do decide to learn how it's done, head over to Skillshare and follow along with expert wine fraudsters. That's, that's not a thing.
If you want to learn something other than counterfeiting wine, check out any of Skillshare's over 20,000 classes. They have everything from photography to graphic design to productivity, marketing, fine art, and more. I love Skillshare because anytime I'm bored, I can just put on a class and learn something worthwhile. A premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on must-know topics, so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. I'm actually working on my own intro to photography course. I'm not going to give you an estimate on when it'll be done because it's taking much longer than I expected, but it will be available for you to watch at some point in the near future. Join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for you guys. Get two months of Skillshare completely free. To start learning amazing new skills today, visit Skillshare by following the link below. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to leave a comment or a thumbs up. It really does help. And if you'd like to be notified of future videos, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to keep up with the latest content. If you'd like to watch past videos, check out these playlists. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.